In wake of two police-involved shootings of black men, there is a new study out that looks at race relations. Pew Research Center found widely different views between blacks and whites on issues dealing with race. So one of the questions asked, was it ne were, were necessary changes made to give blacks equal rights? Here are the results. 40% of white Americans say yes, while only 8% of blacks agree, a very different number than there. So joining me now, UNF professor of sociology, Dr. Jeffrey Ann Wilder, talking about this. There is another study, the same one, it found that twice as many blacks blame discrimination for racial inequality than whites. So when you hear stats like this, but then you also hear people saying, let's all come together, let's all understand each other. Professionally, do you think that's possible? And if so, what does it require? Well, I think it is possible, but I think this study kind of shows and explains why there is so much disparity and, and sort of a huge gap between ideological perspectives. You know, on the one hand, um, you've got a group of people who think that we're okay, that we have enough progression and enough success. And then on the another hand, you have another group who feel like we still have so far, so far to go. So when you have two very diverse uh, starting points, it becomes very difficult to reach a common ground, but it is possible um, by connecting to the things that all bring us together. Like what? Because I think, you know, our experiences also taint the way that we see things, it colors yeah. our lenses. So, you know, we're looking at people who say that they have been discriminated against and then others who don't see that discrimination haven't necessarily felt that discrimination and it's hard to relate to that. Well, I, I agree with that, but I think even just what's happened over the past week um, is reason for us to recognize that we can't be divided anymore. We have to come together. We have to recognize that way too many people are losing their lives. Way too many people are impacted by this and even if we don't agree, we have to all agree that we need to find a solution. So I think that's part of where we can sort of, that's a starting so that's point. A start conversation. Absolutely. You know, we saw the president talk about racial inequality yesterday. We also heard him talk in the wake of the Dallas shootings that it was a despicable act. You know, it's an opinion that you can have that both of these are wrong or, or understand that the potential for one being wrong, it doesn't lessen the fact that the other was wrong right. as well. It's all despicable. Um, anytime you have, uh, you know, a tragic loss of life, um, it, it's, it's not good and it's not, it's, it's not um, you know, it's all vicious. You know, we have seen just over the past five years continued and repeated um, death, um, you know, black folks at the at the hands of police and and that's just as is as tragic and horrible and horrific as what we've seen happen in Dallas now of course two rights don't make a wrong and it's not you know it's not justification in any way um, but again it just harkens for us to wake up and really try to find ways to come together on this yeah I want to look at some of the demonstrations across the country they were all over and I believe this is the one out of Minnesota and if you look at that crowd and you look closely, you do see diversity. They yes. talked about this. You see African Americans, you see whites, you see Asians, you see Muslims. I mean, people coming together. Is this, does this make you hopeful? It, and sometimes you find this in some parts of the country, but not other parts of the country. Well, I think this is really important and it really is encouraging for me to see because, you know, I think part of um, the issue is that there is this idea that, um, you know, it's just black people who are for Black Lives Matter. Um, or it's just the police who are, you know, for Blue Lives Matter. Um, I think these kinds of demonstrations show us that, yes, everyone cares and that, you know, you don't have to be a particular, part of a particular racial and ethnic group to see that, you know, things need to change. And this is New York City again. You see a lot of different races, cultures there as well. But then you look on Twitter, then you look on Facebook. There is a lot of hateful rhetoric yeah. out there. And you wonder though, sometimes the loudest voice is the most divisive. That, I completely agree with that. I also am encouraged by um, the people on my Facebook feed who are not people of color, who are just as um, encouraged and just as outraged and want to find solutions in the same way that people of color do. And so I think, um, yeah, you know, you, you find those dissenting voices, but we, we cannot, um, we, we have to really sort of think about those other people who are trying to, to find solutions and, and trying to, to join together as allies with us as well. And you, you know, you focus on people, your sociology, yeah. and when you look at people and what makes us different and what it takes though, that change to say, hey, my perspective isn't the only perspective. What does that require? Because I think that's a hard thing to ask of people. It requires empathy. It requires passion. It requires a mutual respect. So I don't have to agree, agree with you, mm -hmm. but we do have to respect each other and recognize that in spite of our differences, that we can still come together to really solve some of our biggest problems in humanity. And you know what? This is going to continue to happen unless we start to tap into what 
connects us together, and that's humanity. And I think that's the biggest piece that, you know, even the Black Lives Matter movement is just trying to make sure that everyone is seen as human and that every person um, is treated with respect and dignity. That's that's the important thing. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we're in a time now where it is time to have those uncomfortable conversations with people yeah. that you normally wouldn't have. Don't worry about offending someone. Be right. open, be honest, right. listen. And then let's talk about right, it. Right. And as you said, we don't have to agree. Appreciate you, Dr. Wilder, right. for coming in. Certainly something for us all to consider.